Chapter 11. The Header. The explanation of the presentation of the endowment is continued. The second token of the Aaronic priesthood and the law of the gospel is explained as well as the tokens and the laws of the higher or Melchizedek priesthood. The explanation of the endowment is completed. 1. Ye shall continue the presentation of the endowment by symbolically introducing Adam and Eve into the celestial glory, or the world as it will be known unto your children in mortality. 2. Behold, this world will be very much like unto the world that exist in the celestial glory of the kingdom of our Father, and those who reside therein shall partake of the same experiences that bring them joy in this world, except it be that there shall be no pain or sorrow, nor will there be any sickness or death any more. 3. But in the celestial glory there shall be a penalty affixed which shall be an eternal penalty, that those who reside in that glory will always remember. And those who receive this penalty are those who did not obey the law of the gospel in mortality thus symbolically revealing the token and receiving the penalty that is affixed to it. 4. And since the presentation of the endowment is presented in a world that representeth this glory, I would that ye should introduce this penalty along with its name and sign, as I have shown unto you, like unto the first token that is called the first token of the lower priesthood. 5. And this token shall be called the second token of the lower priesthood. And this token shall be given unto the participants that are receiving this endowment along with the law of my gospel, which I shall give unto them in the written word of the Holy Scriptures, which I shall instruct your children to keep a record of for their instruction and their learning. 6. For behold, there shall come a time when your children will rebel against the things that ye shall teach unto them, yea, even those things which you shall teach unto them in their purity, having received them from mine own mouth. 7. And they shall forget these things, and live according to the lusts of their flesh, which Satan will entice them to do, as he promised in the beginning to take the treasures and things of the earth and build up kingdoms of men that do not follow the laws of the gospel. So shall he therefore have great power over the hearts of the children of men. 8. And instead of looking unto the God who gave them life, many of them will look unto the earth for their happiness. And with the things that are upon the earth shall they find their joy. And this according to the designs and plans of Satan who would have them turn away from me and the gospel that I have given unto you for their sake. 9. And ye shall teach these things to your posterity during the presentation of the holy endowment. Ye shall show how Satan useth his cunningness and the things of this world to turn the hearts of the children of men away from our Father. 10. And there are those who the Father hath given unto me to help me in his work. And these shall be those among you who are the prophets and the seers and the revelators of my words. They shall be my disciples and go forth among the people and teach them the things that I shall give unto them. 11. And these prophets shall be men because of the burden of childbearing that shall come upon the daughters of Eve. And these men, not having this burden, can dedicate their mortal days in the service of preaching and calling the children of men to repentance. However, there shall be many more women than men who already know the gospel and live according to the things that they shall receive by the ministrations of the spirit world. And these ministrations I shall cause to be given unto these women because of their righteousness, they being more righteous than the sons of Adam. 12. And during the presentation of this endowment, ye shall call others to play the roles of my servants, the prophets, and these shall give unto those who are receiving this endowment the law of my gospel, and command them that they shall covenant before God that they will obey the law of the gospel as it is given unto them through the holy scriptures that I shall cause to be written. 
as well as from the mouths of my servants, the holy prophets. 13. And as the endowment hath thus far progressed to a representation of mortality, ye shall symbolically give unto them the second token of the lower priesthood, by clasping the right hands and placing the joint of the thumb directly over the first knuckle of the hand, thus symbolizing receiving a body of flesh and bone, the thumb resting on the bone of the hand for emphasis that they are receiving a body of flesh and bone. 14. The name associated with this token is the first given name of the participants, or in other words, the name by which they are known in mortality, thus signifying that they shall be judged according to their works and their desires and their responsibilities that they have accomplished during the mortal days of their probation. 15. And inasmuch as they are in what symbolically representeth the celestial glory, ye shall give unto them the penalty of this kingdom of glory. For if they choose this glory, they shall suffer this penalty. 16. The sign is given by bringing the right hand in front of you in a cupping shape and the right arm forming a square, and the left arm being raised to the square thus symbolizing the presentation of their works being cupped in the hand as if presenting them to the Lord, and the left arm to the square demonstrating that they did not follow the path of righteousness, for righteousness is represented by the right arm forming the square, and the execution of the penalty is represented by placing the right hand on the left breast, thus signifying the place where feelings are perceived to be experienced and felt by a mortal body, and then drawing the hand quickly across the body and dropping the hands to the side. 17. The penalty that the inhabitants of the celestial glory receive is the knowledge and the everlasting feeling that they reside in the lowest kingdom of glory in the kingdom of God. Though they will have exceeding joy in this kingdom, they will have humble hearts and contrite spirits forever because of the glory that they have chosen. This is the symbolic representation of the penalty of the second token of the lower priesthood. 18. And I have called it the second token of the lower priesthood because it is by the authority of this priesthood that my word is taught to the children of men. For I have suffered them to have churches and administrations of my word among them. And through these administrations, I will command them to establish this lower priesthood and its authority to teach the people of these churches my gospel. 19. And all those who enter the kingdom of God must abide by the law of the gospel as it was presented unto them in the beginning by the Father. For if they cannot abide, they cannot be eternal. For behold, the laws of this gospel will ensure that all of those that will live forever shall live together in peace and happiness, and for this end is the law of my gospel given. 20. For behold, this gospel teacheth all the children of God the proper way to interact one with another. Yea, it giveth unto them the standard that is necessary to live by in order to assure this eternal peace and happiness. For if the law of the gospel did not exist, then there would be wars and contentions and all manner of chaos in the kingdoms of the Father. 21. But there are not wars and contentions, nor is there chaos in the kingdoms of God. Therefore, he that cannot abide by the law of the gospel will not be resurrected into an eternal body until he hath proven himself ready and able to abide by these eternal laws for ever. 22. And this is what is meant by being saved in the kingdom of God. And also this is what is meant by the saving power of my sacrifice for you. 23. For behold, I shall teach you this gospel when I come down on the earth as a mortal, and I shall sacrifice my own safety and my own life in presenting this gospel unto you. Now this is what is meant by the atonement that I shall accomplish for you. Yea, 
I shall sacrifice my life in order to teach you those things that shall make you one again with the Father. For the Father and I are one. 24. And because I shall teach these things, which are the pure and simple truths of the salvation, many shall be angered with me and claim that I am a deceiver who is trying to change the holy ordinances and traditions that I have suffered to be given unto them by their fathers. 25. And because the children of men are so easily led by other mortals who have received their power over the hearts of the children of men by their mysterious words and their supposed understanding of the mysteries of God, this power consecrated unto them by the voice of the people, and because they are led this way, they shall reject the simplicity and pureness of the gospel that I shall give unto them. 26. And for this reason I am burdened by that which I must do, in order to keep the children of men in continual remembrance of the plan of salvation given unto them by the Father. 27. And because I will suffer that the children of men establish churches among them, they are led in such a manner that in many instances they do err, because they are taught the precepts of men who do not understand the mysteries of God, nor are they righteous enough to receive the help of those who would minister it unto them from the spirit world. 28. And it burdeneth me that I must give unto you this holy endowment, so that ye might teach it unto your posterity, and give them another opportunity to hear the words of the Father that they so easily forget. And I know that this endowment will also be corrupted by the men who have no understanding of its meaning and its intent. 29. But I will raise up prophets who shall be given the endowment in its purity, and they shall teach the people the truths that are hidden therein, if it so be the desire of the people to know the mysteries of godliness, which mysteries are not mysterious unto those who know and understand them, but unto those who do not understand them, they are a mystery and will remain so unless the people repent and obey the law of the gospel. 30. And it mattereth not unto me in what manner you shall present the plan of salvation unto your posterity, during the presentation of this endowment. But it is vital to their understanding and crucial to the plan itself that each of them be given all the symbolic tokens along with their names and their signs and their penalties, which are representations of the stages of their existence that they must go through in order to reside in the kingdom of God. 31. I would that you impress upon the minds of those who shall receive these things the importance of not revealing or forsaking these tokens that they receive, or in other words, that they will be willing to accept what these tokens represent, for they truly represent what hath already occurred in the course of the plan of the Father, and also what shall occur in the futures of all of his children. 32. And those who shall be called by my hand to be the prophets and the revelators among my people shall know the proper way to present these things. And in each of their dispensations they shall conform this holy endowment to the needs and the cultures of the people to whom I have sent them. But the tokens with their accompanying names, signs and penalties shall be everlasting for these represent those things that are unchangeable and everlasting. 33. And with the law of my gospel, that those who are receiving the endowment shall a covenant to obey, ye shall reiterate unto them the importance of avoiding those things that distract from the Holy Spirit and cause the children of men to lose the companionship of those who have been assigned to them as their spiritual guides. 34. Ye shall command them not to speak evil of their brothers and their sisters, who are their neighbours, and who have been anointed as kings and queens, priests and priestesses, unto the Most High God. For if they judge their neighbour wrongly, and their neighbour becometh exalted in the kingdom of the Father, and they do not receive this exaltation, oh, 
how great will be their disappointment and their torment for ever in the presence of those who they have wrongfully judged. 35. And ye shall charge them not to take the name of God in vain. Yea, he will not be held guiltless who taketh the name of God in vain. In other words, if a man accepteth the message of the gospel, and taketh upon him the name of God, in that he maketh a covenant with him to obey his commandments, and if this man doth not obey the commandments of God, after he hath made a covenant to do so, then this man hath taken the name of God in vain, and will not be held guiltless for not keeping these commandments. 36. And in all these things ye shall teach your posterity that they shall be taught the commandments of God by the mouth of his holy prophets. And these prophets shall teach the leaders of the churches that I shall suffer to be built up among the children of men. 37. And I have mentioned the lower priesthood and its authority, which authority giveth unto the children of men to administer the outward ordinances of the church, which priesthood I have suffered to be established in the church for the edification and instruction of my people. 38. And ye shall also give unto the participants who are receiving this holy endowment the first token of the higher priesthood, which priesthood hath the power and the authority to have the privilege of receiving the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, to have the heavens opened unto them, and to commune with me, who is your arbitrator, with the Father. 39. And this token shall be given in the course of the presentation of the endowment in the terrestrial kingdom of glory. And those who have chosen terrestrial glory as their state of happiness shall also receive a penalty for that which they have chosen for themselves. 40. And these shall go throughout the days of their probation as honourable men who are blinded by the craftiness of men, and who are deceived by the riches and the glory and the praise of the world. These are they who generally obeyed the law of the gospel, but did not accept me as their saviour and take my yoke upon them, and become one with me. And these are they which are the majority of the children of God. 41. And because the main focus of this token is the ability of a man or a woman to look unto me and follow my example, as it will be shown unto them when I visit the earth in the flesh. Yea, because I am the centre of a selfless life, which is a life like unto that which existeth in the kingdom of glory of our Father. Therefore the name of this token shall be the name of the Son. 42. For behold, I shall live my life according to all the commandments that I have received of the Father. And the works that I shall do, and the desires that I shall have, and the responsibilities that I shall be given, shall be representative of my name, which shall be the Son of God. 43. And those who are deserving of a terrestrial glory cannot take upon them my name, and bear the cross that I shall bear, neither shall they desire to live for the sake of others. And in this way do these reveal the first token of the higher priesthood. 44. And the token shall be given as a symbolic representation of the manner in which I shall be sacrificed because of the things that I shall teach to the children of men, and which things many of them shall reject. 45. And it shall be a sacrifice because I shall willingly give up my life, knowing that I could save myself from the persecution and eventual death which I shall experience. Which death shall be the most cruel and painful death that any of the children of men shall ever experience. 46. And the token shall be given by placing the tip of the forefinger in the palm, and the thumb opposite on the back of the hand of the one who was receiving the token, thus signifying the final stage of the fulfilment of my name, or of my works, as I have explained it unto you which is also the name of the token. 47. The sign of the token 
is made by bringing the left hand in front of you with the hand in cupping shape, the left arm forming a square. The right hand is also brought forward, the palm down and the fingers close together and the thumb extended, thus symbolizing the presentation of their works to the Lord and using the right arm to show that they are committed to accepting a lower kingdom of glory that is below the head, which representeth the celestial kingdom of God, signifying this by the gesture of the palm pointing downward. 48. The execution of the penalty is represented by placing the right thumb on the left side of the womb area, and drawing it quickly across the body, thus signifying that those who inherit the terrestrial kingdom of glory will never be able to produce offspring, or in other words, they will live without the power of creation that is reserved for those of a higher glory. And those of the celestial glory will also receive this penalty as well as the penalty that they receive in the celestial kingdom of glory. 49. And these shall remain with a body of flesh and bone that is eternal, but there shall be no gender among them. Male and female there shall not be. 50. For behold, when a spirit child is conceived and raised up by its eternal mother, it is neither male nor female, having no need for a distinction in its gender. And when the spirit children of the father enter mortality, they shall be given the body that they desire, or the body that will benefit them during the course of the days of their probation, depending on those things that they need to learn or depending on those things that they need to overcome, and also depending on those things that might be required of them by the Lord. 51. For this purpose ye shall give at this time in the presentation of the endowment the law of chastity, which is that your sons and daughters shall not have sexual relations with anyone who is not their spouse. 52. Behold, this law is given because of the great sin of lasciviousness and immorality that existeth in mortality. And this desire to create children is a natural desire that is enhanced by the carnality of the children of men. And those who cannot control themselves in this thing shall not be trusted to have this power in the worlds to come. 53. For behold, this power is reserved for those who will use it for the purpose for which it was intended. And because of this purpose, there are great blessings attached to the ability to use this power. And these blessings are the ultimate feelings of joy and happiness, and will only be experienced by those of the highest glory in the kingdom of God. Yea, these blessings coalesce the most powerful joys that a body and spirit can produce together. 54. And it is because of the joy that is felt from these blessings that the children of men misuse and abuse this power that they have been given in mortality to provide the bodies for the rest of the spirits that reside in the spirit world. 55. Nevertheless, this power and this joy shall be taken from the majority of the children of God and given only to those who shall selflessly serve others for ever, this joy being one of their greatest rewards. 56. And those who inherit the celestial and the terrestrial kingdoms of glory shall not receive the body necessary to experience this joy, nor will they crave this joy, but they shall remember that it existed in the mortal world where they learned to distinguish between those things that gave them joy and those things that gave them pain. 57. And they will often suffer from the knowledge that they were not righteous enough to enjoy this blessing like unto their father, nor will they experience the great joys that come from being an eternal parent. And thus is the penalty received by those of a terrestrial glory and also by those of a celestial glory. 58. And all these shall be saved in the kingdom of God because of their worthiness in keeping the law of the gospel that I have given unto them as it is incorporated in the law of sacrifice. 
meaning that they have received this law because of the sacrifice that I have performed for them. And for this reason shall the first token of the higher priesthood be according to my name. 59. And as the other tokens of the lower priesthood are symbolic of the works that the children of God showed both in their first estate, which is the state of spirit, and also in their second estate, which is the state of mortality. Even so it is that the tokens of the higher priesthood are symbolic of works that others have done for them on their behalf. 60. And these works are done on their behalf by me and my Father. And I have administered these works unto them according to the order of the priesthood that the Father established in the beginning even that which is called the holy priesthood after the order of the Son of God. 61. Therefore, whosoever belongeth to this order shall have the privilege to communicate with the Father and also with me, the mediator of the covenant with the Father, and receive the mysteries of godliness that pertain to the kingdom of glory of which they are worthy. 62. And those who shall inherit the terrestrial glory in the kingdom of God shall not do so, except it be by me, and I shall administer unto them the blessings thereof, which blessings are great and glorious, even so much that those who inherit that kingdom shall experience exceeding joy and happiness therein, according to their desires of happiness, and I shall be their servant assuring that they receive the desires of their happiness for ever. 63. For this reason, this first token, and its name, and symbol refer to me, and the work that I shall do for them. 64. And after ye have given unto those who receive this holy endowment, the first token of the higher priesthood, ye shall teach unto them the law of consecration, which is associated with the second token of the higher priesthood. 65. And ye shall teach them that the law of consecration is the holiest and most sacred law of all the laws of God, and it is this law that governeth the celestial glories of the kingdom of God. Behold, it is this law that bringeth the greatest amount of joy and happiness to an eternal soul. 66. And if it so be that you could teach this law unto your children and cause them to live by this law in mortality, then would they have peace and happiness among them all the days of their probation. Nevertheless, the requirements of this law are opposed to the plan of Lucifer, whose purpose and intent hath always been centred in selfishness, and he hath great power and influence over the hearts of the children of men and this because of the veil that hath been placed over their minds that they do not remember the things of the Father. 67. For the law of consecration is this, that all those who live this law shall give of all that they have been blessed with, yea, even from each according to his abilities, to each according to their needs, that all might be blessed equally according to their needs and their wants and their wants shall only be those things that they shall need, and they shall not want that which they do not need. 68. And under this law there shall be no rich, because there are no poor, all having access to that which all possess, and they shall possess only that which they need for their happiness, and their desires of happiness shall be in providing from their abilities for the needs of others. 69. Therefore, if they receive their happiness by giving of themselves unto others, then they shall receive from others that which they give, and in this way their joy shall be continually full, and that they shall want for nothing. 70. And those who abide by this law shall see as they are seen, and know as they are known, thus being equal with all those who share the same glory. 71. And there is no selfishness among them, because they find no pleasure or joy in doing that which doth not benefit another. But their selfishness is in the joy that they receive from giving joy to others. 
and when they have given this joy to another, they do rejoice for that which they have done, thus receiving this joy twofold, having administered it in joy, and sharing in the joy that they have administered. 72. And such are those who shall reside in the celestial kingdom of glory, and these shall receive all of the blessings that the Father hath received, and they shall receive these blessings from the Father. 73. And ye shall present the second token of the higher priesthood, without its name, to those who are receiving the endowment, from those who are administering it unto them. For its name shall be given to them symbolically by him who shall play the part of the Father during the presentation of the endowment. 74. And the sign of the second token of the high priesthood is associated with the name of this token. In other words, the sign is made by raising both hands into the air and while lowering the hands repeating the words, O God, hear the words of my mouth. This sign signifieth the desire of the person to have communion with the Father, in that he offereth to the Father, by uplifting his hands, all that he possesseth and is. The hands are slowly lowered while repeating the phrase three distinct times in reference to the holiness of the Holy Trinity, and the respect that each member of the Godhead deserveth. 75. And the name shall be symbolic of the blessings that a celestial being shall receive from the Father. And ye shall give this name by saying unto them, Health in the navel, and marrow in the bones, and strength in the loins, and in the sinews, thus signifying the great powers that the bodies that those who receive a celestial glory shall possess. 76. And ye shall continue saying, Power in the priesthood be upon me, and upon my posterity, through all generations of time, and throughout all eternity, thus signifying the ability of a celestial soul to continue the work of the Father for ever, or in other words, that which is done by the power and authority of the holy priesthood, which is given after the holy order of the Son of God. 77. And all those who reside in the celestial glory shall be one with the Father, and shall know him as they are known by him. And for this reason ye shall give the name of this token to them who are receiving this endowment upon the five points of fellowship, which are given to show the representation of being one with the Father in all things. 78. And it shall be given along with the second token of the high priesthood, that pertaineth to the kingdom of the celestial glory, by clasping the right hands and interlocking the little fingers, and placing the tip of the forefinger upon the centre of the wrist of them that are receiving the endowment, thus representing a surety that they will be held in the hand of fellowship by the Father, thus having become one with him. 79. And ye shall place the inside of the right foot by the side of the right foot of the person that is receiving the endowment, thus signifying that this person hath followed in the footsteps of the Father, or in other words, hath lived his life as the Father hath commanded him. The knee shall be to the knee, and the breast to the breast, showing that the person hath bowed his knee in worship and prayer unto the Father all the days of his probation and that the Father hath given him a burning in his bosom, or in other words, a feeling of peace in answer to his prayers. 80. And ye shall place your left hand on the back of the person that is receiving his endowment, thus signifying the closeness and acceptance of the Father, having been embraced by him in this manner. 81. And your mouth shall be near unto the ear of the person receiving the endowment, that they might hear the name of the second token of the higher priesthood, signifying the sacredness and the secrecy of the power with which those who receive the celestial glory will be blessed. For behold, they shall have the power to command the elements, and this power shall be shown unto them 
by the Father according to the laws that restrict this power and reserve it only unto those who are worthy of it. 82. And ye shall administer these things unto those who receive this endowment at a place that is symbolically represented as the veil that hath been placed over their minds, thus signifying that in mortality they cannot see or remember their previous life with the Father. 83. And ye shall present those who are receiving this endowment at the veil. And he who representeth the Father shall put forth his hand, and test the knowledge of them, to see if they have remembered the tokens which they have been given during the presentation of the endowment. 84. And this ye shall do, to show that the Father will not allow any one to enter his presence, unless they have passed through the stages that were presented in the plan of salvation. 85. For behold, it is a requisite of all of us to accept the plan that the Father presented to us as spirit children when we were taught by him in his kingdom. And if we chose not to follow this plan, we were cut off from the kingdom of God. And those of us who kept this first estate in that we did not reveal the token that we received in association with the law of sacrifice that was presented to us by the Father, or in other words, we did not rebel against the law of sacrifice that was presented to us as spirits, are able to continue to our second state, which is mortality. 86. And in mortality you shall be given the law of the gospel that shall be taught unto you through the ministrations of the holy prophets and the scriptures that I shall cause to be written for the benefit of the children of men and also by the words of my own mouth. 87. And those who keep this second estate, and do not reveal the token that is associated with the law of the gospel, shall be candidates of the terrestrial glory in the kingdom of our Father. And those who reveal this token, or sell this token for money, or in other words, set their hearts and desires upon the things of the world, and aspire to the honours of men, shall be candidates of a terrestrial or a celestial state, according to their works and desires of happiness. 88. And those of us who did not give in to the lusts of the flesh, even the lusts that so easily consume the spirits of the children of men, yea, even those that obey the law of chastity as it was previously explained unto you, these shall have the privilege of receiving the celestial glory in the kingdom of our Father. 89. And those who revealed the token associated with the law of chastity, or those who were honourable men and women upon the earth, yet gave in to the lusts of the flesh, shall be given the terrestrial glory in the kingdom of our Father, as I have explained it unto you previously. 90. And those of us who receive the token that is associated with the law of consecration, which is the law that governeth the celestial glory in the kingdom of our Father, shall receive no penalty. For behold, what penalty think you that they who are in the celestial glory receive? For unto them is given everything that the Father hath, therefore they suffer no penalty. 91. And ye shall teach unto them the true order of prayer. For behold, the children of men will offer up many prayers unto the Father in my name. And these prayers shall be in vain, except that they shall be given in the true order according to the way that I shall show unto you. 92. If they shall not be given in the true order of prayer, then when the children of men spread forth their hands unto me, yea, when they make many prayers, I will not hear them. 93. For behold, it is not conducive unto the Spirit who heareth and answereth these prayers, that they be given with much repetition and with much frequency. Nevertheless, I have commanded you to pray always, lest ye enter into temptation because of the power of Satan, who is also there in the spirit world, and can also listen to your prayers. 94. 
Now I did not mean that you should always be in the action of prayer, but I have commanded you to be in the attitude of prayer, or in other words, that you are always aware of the presence of those who are spirits, whom I have commissioned to hear and answer your prayers. 95. And I do not require it of you to pray for all things whatsoever you shall do, but that ye shall do all things in my name, or as I would do them. 96. For behold, there are many who pray over their food to bless it that they may nourish and strengthen their bodies, and in this they use vain repetition, because the food is the blessing that they ask for, and a further blessing shall not be given. 97. And many of the children of men pray for things that they should not, believing that they shall receive that which they pray for, if they but ask of the Father. Behold, the Father already knoweth what you are in need of, before ye ask of it of him. Therefore ye use vain repetition in your prayers, and the only thing for which you should ask the Father is that his will be done concerning you. 98. For behold, if there is one sick among you, and it is appointed unto him to die, what doth it profit you to fight against the will of God? Yea, why should you pray unto the Father that he might change his will concerning the time that he hath appointed this one unto death? Do ye not believe that this spirit child of the Father is loved by him, and that he knoweth what is best for his children? 99. And ye shall teach the true order of prayer by instructing those who are receiving their endowment to form a circle, both male and female, side by side, and this circle representeth eternity, in which the true order of prayer is practised for ever. 100. And ye shall command anyone that hath out against anyone else in the circle to withdraw from the circle. For behold, the Spirit of God doth not reside with those who are angry, or those who have judged their neighbour, or those who consider another to be their enemy. 101. And ye shall instruct those who are in the circle to make all the signs of the tokens that they have received during the presentation of the endowment, and execute the penalties pertaining to each one thus signifying unto each other that they have all passed through the stages of the plan of salvation, and are blessed with eternal life because of their righteousness. 102. For behold, there are no prayers that are heard by those whom the Father hath commissioned to hear and answer prayers on his behalf, that are given in unrighteousness, and for this reason you have been commanded to pray in my name. 103. For behold, my name is symbolic of my works, which I have previously explained to you during the presentation of this holy endowment. And it is not requisite that ye use my name when ye pray. But before ye pray, see that ye do the things that ye see me do, or the things that I shall command you to do according to the ministrations of those whom I have instructed to hear your prayers. 104. And he who prayeth and useth my name in vain, or in other words, doeth not the things that I have commanded of him, shall not be held guiltless, and his prayer shall not be heard. And I have commanded all the children of men to not be angry with one another, and to love their enemies, and refrain from judging each other, so that my spirit may be with them. And if they do these things, then truly they shall have my spirit to be with them. 105. And ye shall instruct those of the circle to take one another in the second token of the higher priesthood, as it hath been explained unto you, thus symbolizing the firm unity in the order to which they belong. And they shall belong to the holy order of the Son of God, which is my order, and shall be the order of all those who keep the commandments that I shall give unto them. 106. And ye shall instruct those of the circle to make the sign of the square with their left arm, 
thus signifying their unrighteous acts done in the flesh. And they shall place their left elbow upon the shoulder of the person to their left, thus signifying that all shall bear the burdens of each other, and support one another in their sins and in their afflictions. 107. And in this way shall ye teach the true order of prayer to those who are receiving this holy endowment. End of chapter 11.